So when I first started using Roam Research, I was a bit afraid to link too often. I didn't want to make many of these links like Thomas Friedman or too many tags, which are essentially the same as links. They just look different just because I didn't want to clutter things up. I'm used to in other systems where tags and stuff can get real unwieldy real quickly if you use them too much. And I've discovered, discovered with Roam that for the most part, more tags and more links are a good thing. So I'm going to show you a few examples of that. So when I'm adding a book to Roam, this is an example here, the book, Thank You for Being Late. I have some metadata I put in. So like the author, and I link to the author's name so I can see all of his stuff on that page. I put in some tags. They always have book and to read, so I can filter by those. I add Blinkist. I've been using Blinkist for book summaries and previews and that kind of stuff. And maybe some more tags. I may put productivity or running or whatever beyond it. I search and look up the Audible length just to have a rough idea of how long the book is going to take to read. I figure that's as good of a gauge as anything. The date finished, I'll put in when I'm done. The why, I always like to have a why I'm reading a book, and often that'll come from the linked references. You can see this was from um, 2018. I had my other notes when I moved them in. I properly formatted it here. But realistically, if I had been using Rome in 2018, I would have had in my daily notes, had lunch with Jeffrey Cohen, and he recommended, thank you for being late. And so when I pull this up, I would have seen it in the linked references. But either way, I want to get that in here. And then the notes that'll show up when I'm done. Now you see on this page alone, I have quite a few links in here. We have the attributes, which are sort of links. Then the author, three more tags, Jeffrey, the date, a lot of things going on in here, which again, used to worry me a little bit, but I'm finding that lots of links are a good thing. So for example, going to book, and we'll see I have 118 books in here, uh, which is, this is almost a useless page here with all this stuff. Uh, but fortunately we have the filter on the right here to filter things down. So I can click on that. And we do a couple things to filter pretty quickly. I might wanna say, uh, need summarization. So I've been trying to summarize, do a better job of summarizing my notes afterward. I think that's really how you get the most out of anything you read is proper progressive summarization. I've not done a great job of that, but I at least know what I need to work on. So here's 59 that I need to summarize. And I may say, you know what? I want to go even further. And so I can find the ones that I use Blinkist on, which theoretically I think is probably more important to summarize because I didn't read the entire book. Uh, maybe I will, maybe I won't. But if I want to remember it at all, I probably should work through the summarization exercise. So I can click it as well, and that'll drop it down to six. So here's six books that I used Blinkist for that I finished reading and they need summarization. So that narrows things down pretty quick. Um, you see, I click to add things over here. I can also shift click to show things that um, I don't want filtered, like the an inverse filter, I guess it would be. So I could say, I guess back to that, I could say it needs summarization, but I want the books I read fully. So I will shift click on Blinkist. And so now this is gonna be all the books that need summarization that I did not use Blinkist for. So these are books I've read that I've not done summarization on instead, uh, rather than Blinkist, so kind of the opposite. You see, I've got 53 there versus if I did Blinkist and turn that on, then it's just the six of those. So you can do a lot of things to really dig down deeply, uh, very quickly to get things sorted out using the filters. In theory, in my case, for a lot of things, I could just click on the to read or Blinkist tag just to click on to read. Here's the stuff I wanna read, these 17 books. And so maybe I'll click on to read um, and then I can filter by Blinkist and see which ones I wanna see. And actually I have Blinkist already filtered on here. Sorry about that. But I have Blinkist on there already to filter down by. So if I click just on Blinkist, that'll show me all the ones, you know, I'll turn off the filter again, all the books that have Blinkist in here, which isn't necessarily helpful because I've read some of them and not read others. And I click on to read. Here's all the books I wanna read, but some are Blinkist and some are not. So you kinda of have to use the filter to get both. So I can say, here's the books I wanna read and then do a filter and say, and here's the ones that are in Blinkist. Now let's figure out which one I wanna work through real quick. Or again, maybe the opposite. Here's the books I want to read, but I'm going on vacation. I want to have you know some some good long books to read. I don't want Blinkist, so I'll just have a no Blinkist tag for ones I've specifically found aren't in there. Uh, so not every book's covered yet. I need to research them, but I can uh, shift click on Blinkist and say I can hide the ones that I know are in Blinkist for sure. Okay, so here's the books I want to read that are not in Blinkist. Cool. Now let's find a good one to read, and you know I have the Audible links that may help me decide. Okay. A good long book, space, you know, 37 hours it says to read. That might be a great one to read. I can figure out what I want to do there. Um, another way I use filters is if we go to quote. I put a lot of quotes in here and tag it with quote. Um, and like books, I have quite a few. I have 96 quotes in here. So that's more than is real useful. I mean, I certainly could read through them and find what I want. And to be honest, I could probably stand to put in more tags here. Most of them I have just quote or quote and in Anki. I use Anki for spaced repetition. So I try to remember some of these quotes. So some are in Anki, but again, if I do a quick filter, you can see I go from 96 um, and in Anki is probably buried in here because there's not many. Yeah, there's nine I have in Anki. So here's, you know, the ones I don't. Really what I could do is shift click in Anki and say, okay, here's the ones that are not in Anki. Do I maybe want to add some more of these in there so I can start remembering them better? Realistically, where I may use this page is uh, by 
by the person that originated the quote. So I may say, all right, I'm working on finance, which um, again, more tags in here would be nice if I had a finance tag or something. I don't, but I can say, okay, look, Warren Buffett would be a good place to start. So let's just look at the quotes from Warren Buffett. So I can click on that and see just the five quotes from him. You'll notice it said, or four quotes from him, excuse me. Um, it said five in here because one of these has Warren Buffett tagged twice, uh, the, head, the summary and then also in the quote. So it says five there, it's actually four linked references. And I could even, you know, streamline it further with the filter if I wanted to um, with four there, I don't think it's important, but one I got at a Jason Lummer seminar was that. It was a great seminar, but I may say, you know what? I've, I've already done that stuff. I wanna hide everything of his. So I can shift click and say, okay, if it's a quote from Warren Buffett that was not at the Jason Blummer seminar, what's left? All right, and here's three great quotes uh, that I might wanna use for that thing. So as I get more quotes in here, it'll become more useful, but all in all filters are a great way to filter down what you have in there and really should make you less afraid of being very liberal with your tagging and linking and getting all that stuff put together. Hope that helps.